Welcome to the course on Audio Signal Processing for Music Applications. This week we're talking about the harmonic model. And in this uh, programming lecture, I want to talk about the implementation of it, in particular the first part of it, the part that uh, requires detecting the fundamental frequency so that we can then identify the harmonics of uh, a given sound. So we will be talking about one particular algorithm, the two-way mismatch algorithm, that's an algorithm that we uh, presented in, in the theory lecture, and it's a frequency domain algorithm that basically tries to identify uh, harmonic series, possible harmonic series, that match the peaks of a spectrum. So in this uh, plot we see the, like, the measured peaks that uh, we have identified, and then we keep trying different predicted fundamental frequencies and uh, the harmonics of, uh, of it and we measure the error, we measure the distance between these two uh, lists of values. And we do that by measuring two errors, the predicted to measure, so the difference between the distance between the predicted and the measured values, and also we have another measure which is the measure to predicted error. But let's go directly to the actual code. Okay, in the, in the SMS uh, tools package, in the util functions um, file, that is the code for uh, the two-way mismatch algorithm. The core of it is a function called two-way mismatch. In fact, the, the, there is a C version and a Python version. Now we will go through the Python version. Uh, when we run it, we normally use the C version because it's more efficient. So the, this, uh, this algorithm, uh, what it does is it receives uh, the peaks, the frequencies and magnitudes of the peaks, it receives a list of candidates, of frequencies of candidates of fundamental frequency, and it uh, basically identifies which is the candidate that has the smallest error. So it does that by measuring the two errors, the error uh, predicted to measure, which is this part, and then the measure to predicted, which is this part. Within it, uh, it keeps uh, uh, identifying uh, all the distances between the, all the values of the harmonic series and the peaks and it has uh, different ways of uh, comparing those. We're not going to go into detail of that but uh, of course yeah, feel free to uh, go into it. And then finally it just uh, creates an, uh, ar an error array which is the list of errors of all the candidates. Okay, So we have in the error we have a the, all the errors for every single one of the candidates. And then what we do is we choose the minimum of those errors and uh, the fundamental frequency is going to be uh, that uh, candidate that has the minimum error. And then this function is wrapped by another one that is the one responsible for generating the candidates and calling the function. So uh, this uh, F0 to uh, WM receives again the peaks of the spectrum and then it receives the control parameters. So like the maximum error allowed, this is the error that will be uh, allowed for the fundamental frequency to be accepted as such. And then the range of the fundamental frequency, so from minimum and maximum F0. And then there is one value which is kind of a a memory a tracking uh, value that is the, the basically the fundamental frequency of the previous uh, frame and this uh, will allow us to refine the, the, the fundamental frequency by restricting that the fundamental frequency should be as smooth as possible. But the algorithm uh, here is very simple. In fact it just takes the list of peaks that are within the minimum and maximum value of the frequencies and the rest it just makes a few more comparisons about that. There is a lot of in, uh, room for improvement in this algorithm in the sense of generating more candidates so that we do a more exhaustive uh, uh, trial of different frequencies. But for efficiency reasons we, uh, we made this uh, simple implementation so that allows us to compute this uh, quite uh, efficiently. Okay, so I, I wrote a little uh, 
script that basically does uh, an analysis of a single spectrum and then it computes the, the errors of all candidates. Okay, so in here I have this uh, little script that from a sound, the sawtooth sound, it uh, just computes one uh, DFT and so here is the, it computes one DFT of that particular uh, sound it finds the peaks, it finds the, it interpolates the peaks and then it uh, generates possible candidates of uh, the fundamental frequency in a similar way than what we just saw but even more uh, simply uh, in the sense that we are taking the candidates as all the peaks that lie within uh, the ranges that, uh, that uh, we specified. And then it calls the two-way mismatch algorithm, but I modified the function, so I have it here, in a way that the, uh, instead of returning just one value, uh, the fundamental frequency that is the minimum uh, error, it returns all the errors. So it, uh, it returns the array of all the errors for all the candidates, so that we can uh, uh, look at them and see how, uh, how they behave. Okay, and then it prints, here it just prints the spectrum and the peak, so we can understand a little bit what's going on. Okay, so let's run this. So let's uh, run a test. Okay, and uh, this is the spectrum, the magnitude spectrum, uh, and uh, the, the peaks uh, that uh, we found. So let's uh, maybe zoom in a little bit so that uh, we can uh, see a little bit what is going on. Okay, so uh, these are clearly the harmonics of the sound. It has also found peaks uh, like before the fundamental frequency and one after the fundamental frequency, uh, but uh, that's... Uh, that's uh, well, basically, it has identified just the, the harmonics. So now uh, let's uh, let's plot or and let's uh, print some of the intermediate values of all these. Okay. So uh, clearly, the first uh, thing is the candidate. So if we uh, print the F zero C, this is the candidate, and it's going to be the peaks that lie within the frequency range that we specified, which was between 50 and 2000 Hertz. So the candidates are uh, the first five peaks and if we print uh, their frequencies, so by doing IP freq and F0 candidates, those are the frequencies that lie within the frequency range and that we're going to test in the algorithm. So we're going to test 166 Hertz 440, 637, etc, etc. So now let's print the errors that it returned. So F0 errors, which is the output of this algorithm, will have the errors for every one of these values. So for 166 we have an error of 4.8, for 440 has minus 0.13, so clearly this is the smallest of all errors and this is indeed the fundamental frequency, uh, the candidate that uh, is the best uh, one for as a fundamental frequency. So the, these error values uh, are a little bit misleading because they are not uh, bounded within a particular range, it can be even be negative like in this case, but clearly the larger the error, the less uh, um, uh, the less uh, uh, chance is that it's going to be a fundamental frequency. So we will be uh, focusing on the, the lowest errors uh, that we have. Okay, so uh, this works quite well. Uh, now we can, uh, we can go into um, another um, uh, file that basically does this for the whole sound. So we will be iterating for the whole sound. We are just doing the exact same thing. We are taking the, the Satus sound and we are trying a different window we keep uh, doing see if we can uh, get uh, a different type of result and we take the FFT we define the minimum and maximum and we call um, a function F0 detection which in fact is on the harmonic model um, file in the harmonic model file there is this function called F0 detection that does all what we talked about. Basically, 
it, it accepting uh, gifts uh, from the input sound, the sampling rate, window, FFT size, and the values given by the user. It iterates over the whole sound and it calls the DFT, the peak detection, peak interpolation, the, the two-way mismatch algorithm, and then it uh, decides which one would be the best uh, fundamental frequency. There is a few um, uh, sort of constraints to make sure that the fundamental is stable in time uh, related with this track that we talk about. So, uh, but basically it returns just the fundamental frequency that it uh, considered to be the best. Okay, so let's uh, now uh, look at uh, test one and let's run it. So let's uh, run test one. Okay, and uh, now in fact we can just uh, show the F0. Okay, so this is the the values that it has returned. Well, the hop size that I specified was quite large, a thousand, so it is not that many samples, so we, that's easier to, to look at. And, okay, clearly the, there is uh, not uh, a perfect uh, fundamental frequency identified. It uh, kind of varies, like it goes uh, from 439.9 to 440 uh, something. So in fact, if we plot this, uh, this uh, array, uh, we will see the, the, the variation that uh, we will have here. Okay, well, let's uh, maybe get rid of this. And uh, let's get rid of this. And now let's plot it again. Okay, and now we can zoom in to the very top. Okay, so clearly it moves around 440 and these uh, variations are caused by, uh, clearly by the errors of the peak detection algorithm and the interpolation so that uh, we are not really exactly at 440. But of course the, the, the error is very small, it's less than one hertz uh, error. So this is 440 and 440.5 and a little bit below. So this is clearly uh, a quite uh, small uh, deviation from the nominal value that is uh, 440. If we change uh, these uh, values, uh, we might get uh, better results. So for example, instead of having the, the window being uh, 1001, let's, uh, let's make it twice as much as much and the FFT size, uh, let's make it uh, twice as much, okay, and oh, no, times two, okay, and now we will, uh, so let's uh, see that before we were 439.95, 440. something, let's see if it does any different, any difference by um, looking now at uh, these uh, values, okay. So this is uh, what we got now, and uh, it's a little bit better. So we can see uh, the difference between these uh, two values. Now the error uh, is smaller than before. In fact, if we plot now this uh, F0, uh, well, there is uh, this exponential to the minus uh, to, uh, to, to the minus two, so clearly this is a very small, it's a smaller error range than what we had before. So the lowest, the slowest now is 439.9 and the highest value is 440.042. So that means that as the window gets larger and the FFT gets larger, the zero padding increases, we will have better values. Okay, now let's look at the real sound. Uh, and let's uh, uh, finish by uh, running it on uh, this oboe sound. And basically I do exactly the same thing. So I can just run this uh, test two. Okay, this will compute uh, the uh, fundamental frequency of this oboe sound. And now if I plot this uh, F0, um, okay, and now we will have to zoom into the uh, the meaningful range okay and uh, well 
there is definitely also a variation, but here there is both the variation that may be caused by errors and the variation that is clearly natural to the playing of the oboe sound. So for example, uh, this sound is clearly uh, higher than 440, so the oboe sound was played a little bit higher in frequency than uh, 440, so around, in fact, 442. And there is kind of a periodic oscillation that makes sense uh, to be present in, uh, in the sound. And of course, there might be uh, some of these uh, uh, oscillations that may be caused by some error. But uh, this is a very interesting way to try to understand what is going on, and both in terms of the algorithm and in terms of the sound, in terms of this oboe sound and uh, the natural oscillations that might be caused by either the acoustics or the performer that uh, is uh, playing this note. Okay, and that's uh, all I wanted to say. Uh, so basically, we have uh, talked about uh, the an implementation of the two-way mismatch algorithm. And uh, I think that has given us a view on the issues of how to detect the fundamental frequency. Of course, we have used uh, Python and a number of, uh, of these uh, packages and the implementations uh, that we have in the SMS tools uh, package. So uh, that's all. Uh, so this was uh, the first uh, programming class on this uh, harmonic model week. And then on the next lecture, we will uh, then add the whole model and uh, include this fundamental frequency into a harmonic analysis. And we will be able to do both the analysis and synthesis of uh, sounds. So thank you very much, and I see you next lecture.